All right, today I'm going to embark on the uh, stage two uh, needle and jet upgrade for my VZ800. And uh, this is what I'm going to use to do it with. 2K in air filters for the front and rear carb. Let's see if I can get it. SU5589 is the part number for those. No metric ratchet set, metric Allen set, uh, number two Phillips flathead, some needle nose pliers, needle nose vice grips, uh, some micrometer, carb cleaner. Don't know what I'm gonna see when I open these up. Now I'm doing uh, this modification basically from Spacer Jim's instructions and I did order his kit it's not a Dynajet kit um, I will annotate his information his website has been a great deal of help met him on the MIG forums and I will annotate that site as well a bunch of great people on there if you have a Marauder or Intruder uh, M50 you know any Suzuki really and anyways, this is a stainless steel screw kit that replaces screws in your carburetor. You get uh, eight four millimeters for the fuel for the bowls and the carbs. You get four. I'm sorry, did I say eight four millimeters? Four four millimeters for the carb slide cover. You get four three millimeters for the slide plate screws, and you get four five millimeter. Um, for the carb slide cover screws. That's for the front. These are front and rear. Anyways, uh, stainless steel screw kit, Allen's. Um, I got some instructions I printed out from his site for stage two. All right, and this here are, are the main jets. And I'm going with a 122.5 for the front and 132.5 for the rear here's the pilot jets that I'm going to put in and here are the needles uh, the front one's going to go in the Eclipse going to go in the third position the rear one's going in the fourth position and here's the drill bit that Spacer Gym supplies for the vacuum hole and to get the brass plugs out of your carburetors if they haven't been pulled before to get to the mixture screws. So, oh, oh yeah, and the drill for that end dog companion. I'll explain to you first, if you don't know, seat comes off. I'm gonna take the side panels off. Gas tank comes off. And I'm gonna start with the front carb, move my way to the back carb. We'll have to take that battery out for the back carb to get the air box out a little easier. And to try to do and this without uh, taking throttle cables, sink cables, and all that off because I don't have a sink tool. So we'll see if this works. And I will return shortly. I'm gonna go ahead and take the battery out. negative off first and then I'm going to take the positive off these are little leads for my trickle charger put over there back these up take this out try not to lose my nuts from my battery terminal and there we are all right 10 millimeter to loosen the gas tank right. and there's a couple of rubber grommets on top and two below we don't want to lose. 
So when you lift this up, just go ahead and take them out so you don't lose them, put them aside. Now everybody's fun part, here's the pet cock. So we'll go ahead and turn it off. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna take these side covers We're gonna take off. this Allen off. We're gonna remove the hose going to the fuel pump behind this pet cock. And then when we remove this plate, it'll be easier to get this pet cock through. And we'll return. All right, tank off, seat off, battery out. Front carb, rear carb. So we're gonna get into the front carb now. All right, front carb. Since we removed the back frame strut, we need to remove the front frame strut so we can tilt this carb. We also need to loosen these intake screws here to get the air box out and get the can ins in. I All right, to get the air box out, I had to loosen this nut. There is, let's see if you can see it. I'm washing it out, yep. That right there, it's a cable connector, Phillips head. You need to, it's just under the front two quarter panels, you gotta pull off. There's a Phillips head there that holds cables to the air box. On the other side, right under the ignition connector, there's another Phillips head that holds the air box in. Now I'm going to pull the air box out. So I forgot to mention, there's one more screw I took out. Right here where the gas tank plug is. On the left hand side, there's one long screw. Goes through this hole here into the air box. And it's this screw right here. That long guy right there. Alright, so the air filter. This is the front air box. The air filter goes in like this has this snorkel on it alright so there's four screws the whole apparatus comes out but here's the new K&N and, and that's just gonna go right in its place alright uh, just realized that one of my K&Ns that I got didn't come with the gasket so that kinda stumps me a little bit but um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with this front carb put this gasket on Canines come with some longer screws to get into back into the air box. And I'm going to continue oh, on about the snorkel. The snorkel you don't use again because on the old filter, there's the old filter, it has this rim right here that the snorkel fit, fit on. On the KN, there is no such rim, so you don't use the snorkel. All right, now to take the carb off. I don't know if you can see. Gonna take it off the manifold there. There's a screw down there. Just gotta loosen up and try to tilt it. Okay, got the front carb up and out of the manifold. I have a rag down here. Plug the manifold so nothing falls in down in the engine. And to catch all the gas that will come out once I uh, undo the bowl down here. But we're going to start at the top and get that off. Be careful not to let the springs pop out. Oh. We're going to be careful with them. I'm going to replace those with Jim's stainless steel kit, but we still want to be able to get them off and not break them in there. And I'll return. All right, so I was lucky on these screws. They broke free relatively easy. But we want to be careful of there's springs in here. Well, make sure the spring doesn't fly out on us when we get all these screws off. There's the spring. Alright. So you remove the diaphragm and the needle slide. And this is the needle we're going to change. And you see there's two screws down there, the plate. we got to mark that plate, make sure we put it back in the same way. Okay, here's what we got. We got those screws out of there. 
we mark the top plate with there is a nipple on the bottom you can kind of see it Oops, my camera I'm sorry doesn't do micro well there's a nipple it needs to be on the bottom let's so mark the top here's the needle that came out spring here's the new needle we're putting in I almost stripped one of those screws you got to be careful so um, I'll take the spring off plastic washer the washer put this new needle in shower time. All right, here's the old needle it's just one little notch in that the old e-clip so here's the new assembled needle we got um, plastic washer the metal washer and the spring so now we gotta drill out the hole and it's not the hole that the needle goes through it's the offset hole this hole here we're gonna drill right here with the bit provided all this is provided in Jim's kit the needles the eclipse so right. I'm gonna drill that alright first pane um, like the instructions say Jim recommends a magnetic screwdriver uh, I didn't magnetize my screwdriver nor do I have one handy getting those little screws back in proved to be a little more difficult than I anticipated anyways got some needle nose got the first thread started got them in just uh, and make sure you don't cover up that vacuum hole that you just drilled out uh, the tit down on the plate spring washer e-clip plastic washer and um, let's put it back in okay so now we took the uh, float bowl screws off down here and we're going to access the main jet and the pilot jet alright got the carb up on its side got some um, flathead screwdriver we're going to replace the main jet and the pilot jet all right so i got the new um stainless steel allen bolts that came with the kit in got the float bowl back together now we just need to put it back in the manifold put the air box back in and then we're going to get to this um Mixture okay, screws. front car back in, air box back in, clamps tightened up for the air intake, clamp tightened up for the manifold, got the screws back on for the air box, and went for the mix mixture screws. We're probably not going to be able to see it. Uh, Jim's site has a good picture of it, it'll be annotated. But mine, it's back there underneath that Phillips head in that dark hole. Mine did not have a brass cap on it. Looks like someone's been after it already. Uh, it did have a bunch of plastic in there. Maybe it had a plug at one point or something. But um, a lot of recommendations on the MIG site and gym is to start with uh, turn it all the way in until it just gets snug and then back it out two and a half turns. And that's what I did, and I'm going to move on to the rear carb. All right. Rear carb time. Batteries out. Remove, let's see, that breather tube right here. Goes to the air box to the front cylinder. We're going to remove this bolt. Remove the fuel line from the fuel pump and take it out of there so the carburetor can move freely. And we shall continue. So I just wanted to say that I'm... Um, get this air box out I'm just going ahead and taking off this snorkel here uh, right here to make it a little easier to come out of the battery compartment and just so we got the back slide assembly out I'm going to mark the top plate with the sharpie try to get those screws out without almost stripping them this time and drill that hole put it back together all right got the rear carb laying up here it's kind of a pain this one has a lot of uh stuff around it the water drain line from the gas tank 
the throttle stop, the fuel from the fuel pump. Got a bunch of stuff up here next to the wiring harness. And I'm just trying to do this without moving the cable. So I did notice, I mean, I know it's a different carburetor than the front, but it does have aluminum All floats. Right, anyways, there's the main jet. There's a pilot jet up there. We're going to replace those. So right past that throttle cable, there's a hole. And that's where the mixture screw was. Someone's obviously been on this before. The jets were 90-100 factory, I guess. Um, but, man, they put some black stuff in there, I guess, to keep the mixture screws from being worked back out. But it was a bear to get out. But anyways... Got the got it out. Mixture screw is now set for two and a half turns out. Again, screw it all the way in. Come two and a half out. That's a re recommendation by Jim and others for a starting point um, on the MIG forums. Got the rear car back in. About to put the air box back in and uh, make sure all these cables and hoses and everything get back in their proper place and I'll all be back. Right. Got the air box back in, got the carb, got the frame brackets back in. Um, now is the point of time that I tell you about some of my stupidity. I guess there's always stupidity the first time you do something like this. or well, at least for me there is. Put all this back together. Realize I didn't hook up the fuel underneath the carburetor. Took it all apart. Put the fuel line back in. Now I gotta run the other fuel line out to the pet cock and get the gas tank back on. And we'll fire it right back together. I'm leaving the tank loose, see if I need to adjust the mixture screws or anything like that. I'll have the gas on for a little bit to see if fill up the bowls with some gas. Here we go. sound difference. I'll let it run for a little bit. Take it out for a test drive. Clean up these tools. Take it out for a test drive and I'll let you know. Oh, the other, uh, I'll let you know the other foolish thing I did. Okay. She's all done. Back from the test drive. Test ride. And, um, she's, uh, pretty amazing, I have to admit. It's a big difference. <clears throat> so I want to thank um, Jim, everybody at the MIG Forum, and uh, Grant, Boyd, all those guys over there, and everybody else. Um, oh, I told you I was going to tell you the idiotic thing I did. See these four stainless steel Allens? Well, that's the kit. those are from the Jim's kit. Those were supposed to go in where the needle plates are. <laughs> I just reused the um, Phillips head ones. I didn't. I didn't strip them. I almost did, like I said earlier, but I didn't put those in. But that's okay. Here's some extra jets I bought from Jim, uh, just in case I upgrade the pipes. But I have to say, it's a totally different sound as well. It's all stock pipes there, and uh, man, she runs good. She runs really good. The idle was a little high. Brought it back. Adjusted it a little bit. Um, I'll ride it another day. Another 10, 20 miles. And uh, see if the idle's still good. But and stage that, 2. 1999 Suzuki Marauder. VZ800. Oh, I was going to mention too. Um, next project. New chain. I'm to go 16 inch. Our 16 tooth, sorry, uh, front sprocket, brand new rear sprocket. Um, my dad's coming in town for the holidays this week, so I think uh, it might be a father son project there. Oh, <clears throat> and I solved the um, gasket issue. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, one of these filters did not come with a gasket. I had some. Um, what do you call it? Door insulation, the, the thin sticky to go around the inside of the door. Forget what they call it. Anyways, made my own. 
made my own gasket. Seemed to work just fine. Anyways, later.